Hello again, everybody out there in wrestling land, and welcome to another edition of Ring Respect Radio right here on the Video Bros Network. I am Bobby Munson, and I am joined by the man with the angelic voice. He is Papa Smokes. How you doing, Papa Smokes? Yeah, I'm doing great, Bobby. How's everybody doing out there? Hope everyone's doing well, having a good old time, watching some wrestling on TV, because there's a lot of wrestling to choose from these days, Papa Smokes. As on our last episode, we did a big review of MLW. Uh, they're back up and running. It's been excellent to see them. But today on the show, we get to do some more reviewing. We had lots to review lately, and we're going to be reviewing our friends over in Alberta, Southern Alberta Invitational Review coming up here today. And then we're going to get over to NWA Shockwave, something you and I have been looking forward to for a long time, the NWA back in action. Lots to talk about, but before we do, we're going to head, go ahead and ask you to do us a favor. Like the video down below, subscribe to the video and our channel, and also hit the notifications bell that's right beside it. That way, you'll be the first to know when we release new material on the Video Bros Network, particularly new episodes of Ring Respect for Radio that we are trying to bring to the fans as often as possible. It's been great. Lots of content to go through lately, Pop Smokes. Yes, like we were talking about before, finally some new stuff to watch, and uh, we've just been diving into it, and it's uh, fun to be able to talk about it on a podcast and uh, maybe spread some awareness to some of these uh, shows that other people can watch, other fans can get into, just like we have. Definitely so. So uh, we're going to also mention uh, heading on over to uh, check us out. If you like what we do here, you can also check us out with our friends at Backbreaker Media over on Podbean as well as on their YouTube channel. They uh, do our show and help boost us over in the Alberta scene. And a lot of that's come with that uh, great connection between uh, Saskatchewan and Alberta. Pop Smokes, we've been making a great connection there. A lot of uh, friends that you and I have made through uh, working with uh, Prairie Pro Wrestling and previously our time with uh, HIW as well too. And uh, getting to know a lot of people over there. So Great opportunity for us to talk about the Southern Alberta Invitational Tournament that is up and available on YouTube. Uh, there is a video, it's the quarterfinals up there, and then afterwards you can find a separate video for the semifinals and the finals matches available on YouTube through our good friends over at the Wrestling Ro uh, Rodeo site. Uh, Wrestling Rodeo, uh, one of the hosts of the Southern Alberta Invitation Tournament, as well as the WrestleSoad podcast, uh, so our good buddies over there. And then also the other PPW, Pure Power Wrestling, the other sponsor for the show. Yeah, yeah, and uh, we have for the Northern, Northern Alberta Invitational Tournament last year. Didn't we have a good time on that? That was really good. I guess not last year, earlier this year. This year just seems like a blur to me now. This was uh, one of the first new events was available to watch uh, once the first uh, lockdown happened back in eight, March and April. So we had a good time uh, reviewing that. A lot of great matches and great talent on this. So uh, I was also excited to watch the Southern Invitational uh, Alberta uh, tournament here. And uh, we got the quarterfinals set up here. And uh, let's get into it, Bob. For sure. And uh, before we do, just want to uh, commend them on making sure that they reiterated the fact that they are complying with all of uh, the Alberta health officials' uh, COVID-19 compliances. So everything that they were doing was behind closed doors. Uh, there was no fans available there. So any of the cheering, anything like that you hear is uh, through the select people that are there working uh, that day. So they have very select amount of people. I believe that they would have complied with social distancing and anybody that uh, is working there that isn't the two competitors inside the ring. We're all complying by wearing masks as well, too. So, yeah, our friends in Alberta are doing a great job of complying with COVID-19 uh, rules while still trying to do something to entertain fans here in a, you know, uncertain, unprecedented time. Yeah, yeah. this, uh, I thought this looked very good. I think it was taped in Lethbridge, and uh, they had a facility there that, they had a ring set up in, and this looked uh, quite uh, satisfactory for the uh, for the uh, purpose that was uh, needed for this tournament here. And it was nice and bright in there, and, and yeah, like you said, there there were um, some people watching the matches, probably other wrestlers and some staff or whatever, but only on the one side of the ring. And uh, yeah, yeah, we just got to be careful these days. And 
nobody wants uh, anybody else to get COVID. Nobody wants to be uh, the cause of a uh, of, uh, of a breakout or anything like that so uh, I'm glad these guys are being careful about it and everything and uh, some other companies don't look like they're being as careful about it but uh, these guys looking good during COVID and just happy to have a new product to watch. Definitely so so as you were saying let's uh, let's kick things off uh, you know they started this thing off immediately with having a little bit of a video vignette uh, leading into a promo with the fitness read Matthews uh, someone going by to hand deliver him an invitation to the Southern Alberta Invitational uh, thing. So obviously, right off the bat, uh, selling the idea that the Thickness Reed Matthews is definitely one of the bigger names, certainly going into this tournament tonight. Yeah, yeah, I haven't seen this guy's work yet, but I have heard a lot of chit chat on uh, social media about Reed Matthews, and I've been quite curious to see. And, uh, yeah, we got a couple of his matches in this tournament tonight, uh, starting up with a first-round match against Dewey Robson, uh, someone I, I haven't seen before and was anxious to see. Uh, what did you think of this match, Munson? This one started off things nicely. I definitely liked it. Again, uh, I didn't know anything about Dewey Robson. And the same, I had he I've heard things about Reed Matthews. I had not seen his work and stuff. And just like with the, uh, the Northern Alberta Invitational, this was an opportunity for us to put some eyes on some talent we haven't seen before. And there was some standouts in there that you and I both were unfamiliar with the work of uh, prior to that. And once again, being exposed to some guys that, uh, you know, it was great to see. And, you know, Reed Matthews uh, looks like a very sizable boy in there. He's gets in. He's got some nice work. He's very agile for a guy his size as well, too. And, uh, I mean, Dewey Robbins, Robson gave him uh, one hell of a fight inside that ring as well, too. Yeah, yeah, th this was a back-and-forth match. It was a fairly long match as well. And, uh, yeah, the thickness, Reed Matthews, uh, obviously uh, uh, pretty good ring skills. I think they mentioned that he might have been one of the uh, Lance Storm graduates. <clears throat> so, you know, he's got some good training there too, but uh, he's also got a big personality, and, and this helps a lot in wrestling. And uh, he interacted a whole lot with the crowd. He got some of the biggest pops of the evening too so uh reed matthews looking good looking like a, a possible breakout star for western canada in the next little while and uh i liked this match a lot and it, it had me looking forward to his next round match in this tournament certainly yeah so definitely a great way to kick off this tournament a uh, very exciting way too and our, our eyes on two talents we hadn't seen before so great way to start things off and then we roll into one, and I know that uh, we're probably a little bit more familiar with one of the guys in the next matchup. Uh, but I, before we start talking about Travis Cole in general, let's just talk about uh, his opponent of the night, Tony Mach Machete. I knew nothing of this guy prior to going into this one. I'm not sure if you did, Papa Smokes. I did not, but uh, as the commentators informed us, this guy's fairly new. He's in his first year or two of wrestling, but... Uh, I was impressed with the way he came out. This guy's got a body on him. He's been working hard at, in the weight room, obviously, and uh, cut a very nice visual figure when he came out. So already I was looking forward to this. Me as well, too. I definitely like the look of this kid. Uh, and when I heard that he was brand new like this, I'm like, okay, good. This is He's got a good look. He's got you know great ring presence and stuff like that. I think we could be looking at somebody definitely that uh, could be you know, down the line, someone we uh, be taking a look at and hopefully maybe even one day seeing over on the uh, Saskatchewan side once things uh, get back to a little bit of normalcy as well, too. Yeah, we'll have to think about that. Uh, maybe at the next uh, Prairie Pro Wrestling meeting, uh, we'll have a couple more names to bring up for uh, possible crossovers. Definitely so. But uh, his opponent of the night, uh, Travis Cole, a uh, little bit... Uh, you can talk about Travis Cole here, Papa Smokes, uh, get people into this one. But uh, I think maybe we've got a little bit of a tasty story to share with the fans here tonight. Well, sure. I, I, I've seen uh, tasty Travis Cole a, a number of times live uh, over the past few years. Uh, I've seen him in action a number of times, including uh, taking tickets at the door, uh, working the merch table, and uh, selling 50-50 tickets as well. But... I, I, I'm, I'm joking a little bit here. Uh, 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 he has come a long way since then. I've seen a few of his matches when he used to be based in Winnipeg. And uh, 
this guy uh, has uprooted himself and gone to uh, Calgary now and uh, the general Alberta wrestling area and has made a lot of leaps and strides in his uh, in his wrestling uh, skill and, and uh, move set and all that stuff too. So uh, a, a fine looking kid, uh, I think he gets the whole wrestling biz. I, I like his I like his uh, character of Tasty Travis, which is kind of a little Nazi boy there kind of thing. And, uh, and he gets reaction from the crowd. He, he's good. Uh, he seems to be playing the baby role in this, uh, particular promotion here, this tournament. And, uh, the, the fans like him, the fans take to him. So, uh, he's, uh, he's going to be in here. He's going to be in this match against Tony Machete, the, uh, the, the rookie sensation, so to speak. And, uh, yeah, yeah. This is like, uh, uh, little bit of a veteran against a, a newbie here and uh, they put on a pretty good match yeah and definitely a great way to sell the idea that again Travis Cole obviously one of the bigger names in this tournament and they really sold the idea that again this is a guy that you should be focused on and everything like that had a great match with Tony Machete uh, didn't make him look bad especially being that he's as new as he is too in fact if nothing helped kind of elevate him and get him in front of you know some eyes that have never seen this kid work just yet so a great way to you know get introduced to a new name but at the same time continue to elevate Travis Cole who already has put in a lot of the work and you know is obviously uh, a star especially in the western Alberta scene or western Alberta western Canada scene is what I should be saying yeah for sure and uh, like you said I think it's a good idea to put Tony Machete on this program too though uh, they'll get some eyes on him and like we both said, this guy looks good coming out to the ring. Uh, he's got some work to do uh, in terms of maturing as a as an in ring performer. But uh, like I say, he's done a lot of the work already. This guy's got a real impressive looking physique. He's got a cool looking character and everything, and uh, he looks the part of a of a star wrestler. So I, I think it'll just be a matter of time before this guy gets there. I agree in this. Uh, so Travis Cole obviously picked up the victory. He's moving on. Uh, but yeah, obviously, I mean, for us, uh, we could go on forever about uh, the impact that Tony Machete had. It, but we do have to move on. Obviously, uh, he's uh, out of this tournament and we'll get to see more from him in the future, hopefully. But uh, moving on from there, next uh, round match, we had Sidney Steele versus Mo Jabari. Uh, first of all, we'll get into Mo Jabari, but Sidney Steele, uh, do you know a lot about Sidney Steele? Pop Smokes. No, 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 not much at all. This was another guy that impressed me. Uh, even from his entrance, he had the uh, he had the grand sounding kind of movie music. He had a nice cape. He's got the long hair. He's got a pretty good, uh, uh, pretty strong looking physique on him too. And uh, just started interacting with the crowd in uh, true villain style. And uh, I, I was along for the ride with this guy as soon as he came out, uh, looking quite good. And then. Facing Mo Jabari, a, a guy that we're uh, quite experienced with from our days in HIW, and he used to be uh, under the moniker Kid Chocolate, uh, a really nice guy, a really good uh, wrestler, and uh, it was nice to see him again. Uh, I wish we could see him around these parts a bit more often. I agree with you, but uh, definitely Mo Jabari comes out, and this is a different attitude for him. I mean, remember the the fun, love, and happy go luck, and uh, happy go lucky kid chocolate personality that we got so familiar with here and then you see him come out uh, Mo Jabari comes out and this is definitely a darker attitude he's a lot more focused a lot more you know prepared I think in so many ways this guy has gone around and done a lot uh, with many different companies and really brought it inside that ring this was you know probably one of the you know I, I'll, I'll go out on a limb I think this was probably the match I enjoyed the most from the quarterfinal matchups definitely yeah, I think you might be right about that. It was really competitive. There was a, a lots of two counts for for each competitor, um, lots of reversals, uh, lots of great spots in this match. And uh, yeah, like you say, we're not used to seeing uh, Mo as a as a villain character. We we saw we knew him in the uh, tag team Death by Chocolate with uh, Uncle Phil Deadly and. Uh, they were huge fan favorites, and I wrestled that kind of style too. But here we see in the other territory that uh, Mo Jabari is, is not a fan favorite and uh, is, is not opposed to some underhanded tactics. And it's refreshing. It's good. It, it's nice to see when a, 
young wrestler can uh, walk the line between the two roles and uh, play each one with some success. And uh, yeah, continue to be impressed with uh, Mo Jabari slash Kid Chocolate. Uh, really, really excellent guy and uh, great to watch in the ring. Yeah, and then uh, after that, so Sidney Steele winning that matchup, he'll go on in the tournament. Uh, very competitive, great, great lockup between those two. But then uh, one that I was excited to watch, and you know, I'll I'll give my reasons why I wasn't quite as excited by the end, and I'm not gonna not gonna knock anybody or anything, just you know, personal opinions. But damn it, man, we've said it many times before. Cheetah Bear Jude Dawkins is just awesome. I I saw that he was announced for this tournament. I saw he was going to be in this tournament. His opponent, somebody I I knew nothing about, uh, Jumpin' Josh, going into this one. Um, But I was excited to see Cheetah Bear go all the way in this thing. Yeah, yeah. I'm also a big fan of Cheetah Bear. I I love me some Cheetah Bear anytime I can watch. uh, He's a a great creation. Uh, I have no idea what... What kind of a creature he is? He obviously uh, is some kind of a hybrid between man and beast. Uh, he acts like one. He wrestles like one. He's got that wonderful entrance with those loud drums that just just gives me the goosebumps. Even just remembering it, watching it live the uh, past couple times uh, in, in the past year or two, and uh, I, I just love the cheetah bear. Uh, his opponent was. Jumpin' Josh, someone I'm also not familiar with. Obviously, a very young guy. Looks like he's might be just barely 20 or something like that. Um, also, uh, did Jumpin' Josh remind you of anyone months that uh, we've had around uh, PPW in the in the past year? Uh, he, he reminds me of someone. You know who I'm uh, getting at here? I think you might be talking about a certain uh, Jeff Tyler by chance. Yeah, that's right. The Sky Flyer himself. This this guy reminded me a lot of uh, a young Jeff Tyler kind of thing. Uh, uh, doesn't have the huge physical gifts or the giant strength of the big muscles or anything like that, but very determined and, and very uh, focused. And then using his light body weight to, to be an aerial skill master, uh, coming off the ropes, uh, doing dives, uh, going over the top rope, all that kind of stuff. I think it's a good... Uh, I think it's a good uh, way for a smaller wrestler to make his name known, maybe to get his stuff out there. And uh, just like Jeff Tyler did, uh, this guy can can forge a main event career or a main event run if he wants to, if he can get in the right angle. He he needs some more... uh, some more experience and all that, but uh, wrestling a, a veteran and a ring general like the Cheetah Bear will help him get there. Oh, certainly. And, you know, I was saying before we got into this that, you know, I was looking forward to seeing Cheetah Bear go all the way. And this is, I hope nobody takes this as a knock on Jumpin' Josh or anything like that. But I just I always feel, and even like I feel about this, and I'll break the fourth wall down a bit. The fact that even in PPW, this guy, Cheetah Bear, has not been pushed like the quality of character that he is. I mean, this guy is, he's up there, man. This is a guy you can have hanging out in that upper echelon of your roster and picking up victories and stuff like that. And I just feel like there was a lot more star power to be had on this tournament as a whole with having the Cheetah Bear move forward. Of course, he loses by a count out in a spot where he kind of throws Jumpin' Josh back into the ring before the 10 count. And this is his opportunity to get back in himself. Um, I, I feel like there was so much hesitation in the way that move was pulled off that it it almost kind of it, it felt a little bit too silly to even make it believable, unfortunately. And it kind of lost me in that one moment. And, you know, maybe again, it was because I'm so sold on the cheetah bear and felt like it just would have been tremendous to have this guy go further that maybe I was just a little bit shocked and not in the right way I guess uh, in this case pop smokes but that's just how I felt personally it's a again not a knock to the guys or what they're doing or about the quality of the match in general I just I really feel like we're, we're sitting on something bigger with Cheetah Bear and nobody has gone forth with it just yet. Well, you're you're really knocking jumping Josh here, man. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I think what they were going for in that mat was was to. Uh, it looked visually like such a mismatch between them. Uh, like we said, uh, jumping Josh, rather a tall, thin, 
young man uh, and a uh, cheetah bear, uh, not as tall, but with that heavily muscled body and heavily tattooed. And he just looks like a wrestler and he looks like an extremely tough wrestler too. And I suspect what they were going for in this, uh, in this finish was, was the element of surprise they, that, that we all assumed that the cheetah bear was going to go over in this match. And he did not, uh, uh, Josh got the win on him. It was a bit of a surprise. And then, and then it just kind of leads to thoughts of, well, if this guy could surprise once, maybe he could surprise someone again in the second round. I, I don't know. I, I feel the same way about that finish a little bit, but uh, they were going for something in the booking of that. And uh, uh, yeah, maybe Cheetah Bear just uh, wants to give a hand to uh, some of the younger guys or, or wanted someone else to have that second match instead of himself, who's had plenty of matches in the ring. Uh, we again just like booking we don't know the the inside story of it but uh yeah we got what we got and uh cheetah bears out and jump and josh moving on to the next round yes sir and that uh rounded up the quarterfinals the opening matches of the tournament so from there uh, a separate video was put out with the semi-final and final matches as well uh so let's uh we're gonna move straight into that one papa smoke so there was a recap of everything that happened from the quarterfinals and then uh, we kicked off with the first match in the semifinals. Again, we're getting to see Sidney Steele and taking on Tasty Travis Cole in this one. Uh, what were your thoughts on this particular matchup? I like this one a lot. Um, this showed that the second round was going to be a bit of a step up from the previous round. Like you, you could see the uh, the kind of intensity between these two more veteran uh, wrestlers here. and you, could, you knew that they were going to uh, open up for a pretty long and competitive match and that's exactly what we got so cole's comfortable in there sydney Steele looks like he's got a lot of matches under his belt too i like sydney Steele uh for his uh his heelish interactions with the crowd seems very comfortable with that i, I think that's a huge asset to have as a professional wrestler especially for live shows and for tv as well he he certainly knows where the uh, hard cam is and uh, goes turns his attention to it and has a few things to say uh, about his own greatness and uh, whatever he wants to say to the camera. And uh, that only helps get your character over in any kind of match, win or lose. If you, uh, if you interact with the cameras like that and say what you got to say, and the people hear you say it. Oh, for sure. And yeah, what a, you know, this was a great match up there. And again, Sydney Steele, I got to say one of the uh, definite standouts from this tournament for me, for somebody who I was unfamiliar with, and somebody who definitely, uh, definitely peaks the radar uh, level here. I, I'm interested in his work. I'm interested in seeing more going forth. And again, somebody I wouldn't, uh, wouldn't have any issue seeing uh, make his way over to Saskatchewan once these COVID restrictions begin to li lift. Yeah, I, I after the first round, I had it in my mind that maybe Sydney might win this whole thing too. And uh, I don't think that was uh, off the mark too much. It never ended up coming true. But uh, I think this guy has a has a upper mid to uh, top card quality to him for uh, independent shows in Western Canada. Yeah, I could see this guy uh, doing some bigger stuff in Alberta. And uh, another guy I would definitely uh, consider bringing into our own uh, fed here, PPW. Definitely so. And so Travis Cole picking up the win. He is going to move on to the finals. He'll be taking on either the winner of the next match, Reed Matthews or Jumpin' Josh. And Jumpin' Josh coming out with his new buddy, the Cheetah Bear, Jude Dawkins. So Cheetah Bear coming out to uh, basically be, in the, be the corner man this time for Jumpin' Josh in this matchup. Yeah, see, they must have... Uh... Either they're buddies uh, from training or something, or they bonded during their previous match. And uh, very uh, sportsmanlike of uh, Chia Bear to come out and support his uh, previous opponent, a new friend, and uh, always use a, a corner man in any match, especially one that's a combination of Cheetah and Bear. Definitely. So uh, what do you think of the match itself? I thought it was quite good. Um, once again, the... Uh, the thickness, Reed Matthews kind of led this match a little bit, uh, uh, helping the, the the younger Jump and Josh along. But they did some nice spots in this match. Uh, they also gave them uh, a few extra minutes, it being a second round match. And uh, 
I liked this one. Uh, Matthews eventually getting the win by submission. He did that quite a nice submission hold, that kind of bridging shoulder lock where he uh, uh, basically wrapped Josh's arm around his own body and uh, pulled it while he was bridging. Uh, it's a nice submission hold in the way he'd worked on uh, the limbs of Jump and Josh during the match. The, you could totally buy that this uh, submission was submission hold was going to bring a tap out. And that's exactly what happened. And uh, yeah, no shame from Jump and Josh losing to a, a more experienced uh, competitor than that. I think he put in a, a good showing in this tournament, but uh, the thickness read Matthews too much for him, and uh, he's going to the final. He certainly is, and I kind of, I almost feel like I saw the writing on the wall when Travis Cole won that we were going to see Travis Cole and Reed Matthews in the final. I almost ventured to think that maybe had you put the Jump and Josh Reed Matthews match on first, and I'm not telling anyone how to do their job. I'm just trying to think wrestling like. <laughs> Had you put that match on first, it might have kept a little bit more of that mystique you were talking about of can Jump and Josh pull off a second upset. But I think once we had established that re, uh, Travis Cole was going to the finals, you, you kind of got that feeling at that point that we were getting Travis Cole and Reed Matthews for a final matchup in this tournament. Yeah, I suppose so. But uh, nonetheless, uh, an exciting matchup and, and two of the big boys in this uh, tournament. Uh, going to the final, but first we had uh, kind of a special feature match that wasn't actually part of the Southern Alberta Invitational Tournament, but uh, simply kind of a grudge match. Is that how you took this uh, feature match? Yeah, I believe they referred to it as uh, Cody Max Open Challenge, if I'm not mistaken. So right. we had uh, Britton Watts taking on Crude Oil Cody Mack. And Manda's... Uh, Cody Mack ever kind of looked like a 1990s uh, Vince McMahon gimmick written all over him with the whole uh, Alberta oil rigger and stuff like that. I mean, I, I, I got I got vibes of uh, the old spark plug Holly eras and stuff that I grew up on there with this guy. I mean, I mean, maybe maybe it was the kid in me, but I was I was having a little fun. I, I like Cody Mack. He, he's got a good look to him. I, I can get behind this gimmick. It, it's fun. Yeah, I, I you completely. Uh... Uh, I think he looked good. I I liked his uh, I liked his gimmick. It it kind of fits in with the whole uh, Alberta oil fields thing, and I think uh, a lot of people uh, living out there can have a chuckle at that. He comes out with this big wrench, and uh, he came out with a whole lot of uh, energy and enthusiasm, uh, quite a lot more than the cowboy Brian Watts did. Uh, I like uh, Cody Mack. I like what he's going here. Um, this match, however, was kind of left me a little bit cold. Uh, it, it wasn't bad. It just was not to the quality of the other ones on this card. Um, I think these guys are pretty okay. I just think they had a match that didn't really catch fire, so to speak. And, uh, yeah, this was pretty okay, but it, it, it didn't really do it for me completely. But we had... The winner, Cody Mack, going over by pinfall uh, using a jackhammer suplex. And that was pretty nice. And he got his win, and the crowd seemed pretty happy with that. So uh, what did you think of this one? Yeah, I think I'm with you on this one, Papa Smokes. I mean, it didn't uh, blow my mind by any means, and nothing against the workers in the match or anything. Again, I said Cody Mack was a lot of fun. And also nothing against Bryn Watts either. I mean, it, it was what it was. It just kind of was that... They needed to put another match on the card to kind of fill a spot so that, you know, we weren't rushing right into the finals after we just did the last semifinal matchup. So it was a good way to break up the tournament a little. But again, it just it didn't feel like there was enough there to really get behind or anything like that. I know with the Northern Alberta, the uh, the breakup match that they had was between uh, Zoe Sager and I believe uh, Taryn from Accounting. And. I think that one uh, broke things up a little bit more because it was a women's matchup in the midst of this uh, men's tournament and stuff like that. And here again, we were just treated to another match that really could have fit into the beginning of this tournament in the first place and stuff like that. So it just really didn't, you know, didn't fit into the uh, where it was placed kind of, in my opinion, there was nothing there to get too excited about. This was really just the, the rest period almost. Yeah. Yeah. I just, uh, same thing with nothing against either workers or, or any company or anything like that. I just think it was uh, 
I just think neither of them had probably the match they were hoping for, and that happens. Sometimes it's no fault of anybody's, but maybe the chemistry doesn't work out on a certain night or between a certain couple of uh, grapplers, and uh, that's just it. Uh, they'll be fine. Uh, they'll go on to uh, to uh, have bigger matches than that, and uh, and uh, possibly will be there to see them too. But uh, they got a chance to have a a competitive match in a ring during the middle of this COVID when nobody's running shows and stuff. I'm sure they were thrilled about it. And, uh, I'm sure the, uh, makers of the Southern Alberta Invitational were happy to have another match to fill out their card too. So ultimately it uh, fulfilled its purpose. So we're all good. Exactly. So, and it fulfilled that spot to uh, lead us into the finals of the tournament. Uh, Tasty Travis Cole and the thickness Reed Matthews, uh, what, what are your thoughts here on this uh, final matchup between these two competitors? Well, I thought it was uh, set up quite nicely. They uh, Having the third match of the evening for each competitor kind of counted into it. We had Reed Matthews, who had had his back worked over in, the, in his very first match, and it was kind of questionable throughout. And, uh, and uh, these guys put on quite a show. Uh, uh, both of them... Uh, these guys had some chemistry together. Uh, they had a nicely laid out match. They started it uh, just as you would in a competitive final like this with a slugfest competition and laying some pretty hard chops on each other's chests and uh, having the old uh, running and bumping each other into running the ropes and bumping each other, you know, trying to knock each other over. This was this was starting a match of two guys who are rivals maybe don't like each other a bit and are trying to uh, have a real competition between dudes to see who's who's bigger and who's badder and who's the better wrestler. And uh, the whole match kind of went like this. There was a lot of uh, good spots. There was a lot of uh, two counts and uh, close calls and false finishes a, a few times uh, until the ending here. And then what did you think of this finish, Munson? Well, uh, quite interesting to say the least. I mean, Mo Jabari coming out to create a distraction here, which then led to a a, a full on uh, heel turn here for Travis Cole. I mean, he then uses the uh, the underhanded nut shot there right to uh, his opponent Reed Matthews and basically stealing the win. Uh, almost maybe proven the fact that the thickness Reed Matthews more or less had this thing wrapped up had it not been for this unspoken agreement between Mo Jabari and Travis Cole? Yeah, yeah, and uh, this kind of came as a surprise to me. Of course, in the tournament setting, it's not really an angle, so we don't know of the backstage alliances or, or in-ring alliances, for that matter, between these wrestlers, so I wasn't expecting interference. I wasn't, uh, I didn't know why Mo Jabari was coming out, but obviously there's, there's something that we haven't seen, maybe uh, some lingering feelings from a feud or something, but uh, yeah, Mo Jabari coming out with the distraction, uh, Travis Travis Cole with the uh, backwards donkey kick to the groin, and uh, Reed Matthews down for the count, and uh, one, two, three, we've got a Southern Alberta Invitational winner in Tasty Travis Cole. Yeah, picking up a big victory, and when what could be said was from a big match, they did a Great job of making sure that you got two of the guys that are definitely are, – are, these are two big names uh, in Alberta, definitely, and starting to really uh, make themselves known in Western Canada and stuff like that as well, too. So, I mean, if you want to elevate two guys that are kind of on the rise already, a great opportunity to have a final match between Tasty Travis Cole and Reed Matthews and a great way to showcase the other talent that they had involved in the tournament as well. Uh, personally, got to say, Pop Smokes, I was entertained. I was happy to see some wrestling, especially involving people we know and people that we've, you know, come to get to know per on a personal level too, working uh, directly with some of them as well. I mean, I, I was extremely happy not only to watch it as a fan, but also to, you know, get the opportunity to talk about it here on the show and, you know, get to see some of the more work from these wonderful people that we've uh, gotten to know over the years. Yeah, and hasn't it been fun to, uh, like we said, enjoyed the Northern Alberta Invitational last year, loving this one, the Southern Alberta. Now I'd like to see a, a mixture of the two because I suppose we knew more people from the Northern Alberta last year, including uh, Michael Richard Blaze and uh, 
and a few of our other favorites, uh, like you were just saying. But uh, uh, this time around, we had some new talent, uh, not as familiar with the Southern Alberta guys, and, and nice to see some new talent, some emerging talent, some guys looking pretty good in their uh, – you know, in their rookie or, or early years of their career. And uh, this is just a good way to get noticed for all these guys and to uh, have some matches that are uh, on TV, so to speak, on YouTube and uh, that are getting some people watching them and, and, and probably uh, making some fans in the meantime and bringing more people to their live shows when we get back to that uh, particular state. And uh, I, I think it was a highly successful uh uh, tournament. I hope the guys did good with it. I hope they uh, reached their goals for it, and it's uh, it's a pleasure to talk about it on the uh, Video Bros Network. Yeah, it certainly was, and you know, I just want to once again say a big shout out to uh, the guys to help to uh, sponsor this and put this all together. You know, our good friends at Wrestling Rodeo and the Wrestle Soap Podcast. Uh, head on over and check out their work. Uh, you know, like and subscribe there. Check out all of the wrestlers involved as well, too. I mean, these. These guys are putting on a show during a pandemic and stuff like that, doing what they can to entertain people uh, during this time. So, you know, credit to everyone, credit to the people working cameras, the people doing editing, any involvement with this entire show. Just, you know, a big shout out to all of you. Thank you for putting this on. Uh, Thank you for allowing us the opportunity to see these talents. Uh, Hopefully more can be done. And like Papa Smoke said, uh, eventually things get back to normal and we can start to see uh, some of you guys back here in Saskatchewan as well, too, you know, open up those borders once again and get some uh, interprovincial travel going and some shows back here in Saskatchewan as well. And hey, who knows, maybe one day we'll uh, have an Alberta versus Saskatchewan tournament uh, that has to happen. Not a bad idea, Munson, not a bad idea at all. Uh, that uh, And if that's the case, I think that we almost have to have dueling uh, Saskatchewan and Alberta commentary teams, so... I mean, uh, I, I'm always up for the job, Pop Smokes. I think you are too. So, uh, Alberta, be on the watch out for when COVID restrictions lift. Pop and Smokes and I are thinking. Yeah, I like it. I like your plan a lot. Perfect. Well, you know, Pop and Smokes, now we're going to go on over to another review. And this is a review of something that we've been looking for, for forward to for a long time. We've talked about many times on the show that we can't wait for the opportunity for the NWA to make a return in some sort of capacity, and they did it. There was an announcement coming. NWA Shockwave Episode 1 was going to be hitting YouTube. Didn't know what this was going to look like or anything much about it, just that this was going to be previously unseen matches. So I wasn't sure if this was stuff we hadn't seen that was originally taped for power or something completely different. And wow, was it something different. A a work in conjunction with the United Wrestling Network and... Let's uh, let's get into this, Papa Smoke. NWA Shockwave. What are your thoughts here? Yeah, yeah. Excited, just like you. Uh, not everyone likes NWA Power, but I I really like it. I know you like it too. So I was excited for NWA Shockwave. We've all had uh, all of us fans of, of Billy Corgan's new NWA have had a kind of uh, worry worrisome last year because. It doesn't look like the company has been doing that great during the shutdown. They decided not to run shows or anything like that, being responsible for the health of the competitors and fans. But, yeah, it was just uh, a lot of their roster left to companies that are running shows. So they lost a lot of their top talent, and, and that's really crippling to a company. Obviously, they kept some of the main ones, the main most important one being Nick Aldis, obviously their kind of uh, cornerstone champion there that they built the whole company around. And uh, obviously that's the guy they need holding the belt. He uh, holds it with a lot of pride and prestige, but uh, I, I'm just glad they kept going. Uh, if they have to uh, make a deal with another uh, company such as United Wrestling Network, then so be it. Um, just anything to keep going, keep the ship afloat. And uh, we had Nick Aldis out here for a promo at the very beginning of NWA Shockwave uh, talking about this and uh, hyping up his title defense, which would be the main event of the show, versus Mike Bennett, formerly of WWE. Yeah, and I mean, as I've mentioned before, too, is that uh, Nick Aldis, I mean, he 
you mentioned it too. Uh, he holds this championship and needs to hold this championship. He carries himself like a real world's champion, like he says he is. And you believe him. You believe everything he says. And then he goes out there and gives you great performances on top. He backs up his words with actions inside the squared circle. Yeah, that's exactly right. And uh, this was pretty much the perfect guy for the NWA to have as uh, their belt holder uh, among the the launch of the new brand, uh, the, as I call it, I guess the Corgan era, uh, Corgan era NWA. Um, they've got uh, all this. He looks like a uh, one of those classy champions from the territories. He looks like a Ric Flair or a Nick Bockwinkle. He carries himself with uh, pride and distinction. He's he wears the expensive suits. Uh, he looks like uh, he looks like a real traveling man and a, and a and a and a defending champion. And this guy looks great with the belt, and uh, they they got to keep him around. And they have a few other uh, important pieces to this, and and we saw a little bit of it tonight. But in, in this uh, NWA Shockwave uh, brand new edition, and they're going to have to uh, get some new faces in there. We didn't see too many new people. In this uh, first episode tonight, they only had uh, three matches, but uh, yeah, I'll be very interested to see what they do with their roster in the future, and uh, obviously sharing talent with uh, United Wrestling Network, Uh, and yeah, I think this can only be good for the survival of the company and and maybe the flourishing in the the coming year. Yeah, and... We mentioned earlier uh, when we were talking about the NWA earlier in the year too that uh, would be interesting to see, you know, how they kind of deal with some of the talent that's uh, jumped ship over to places like AEW and everything, and how they would bring new faces in. While the uh, working alliance with the United Wrestling Network opens it right up for them, and we did get introduced to a couple of a uh, couple of people that weren't necessarily familiar with the NWA roster, as far as I remember. There, Pop Smokes. Uh, particularly our commentary team. Uh, Joe Galley is the one returning from NWA, but we also got the voices of uh, Melissa Marino and Todd Kenley, I believe the names were, that joined the commentary team along with uh, Joe Galley there. Yeah, I'm assuming that they're the commentators for United Wrestling Network, and they just had Galley in for the NWA flavor of it. And uh, I thought the three-person team did quite well in this. They, they sounded good, and... Uh, I look forward to hearing more from this combination. Yeah, and uh, what I liked about the uh, the three of them as well too is that they definitely the they they know what they're talking about. They get in there, they know the backgrounds of the competitors and stuff like that, and they made you understand. Even if you're not too familiar with them inside the ring, they made you understand what the backstory is a little bit behind them and what they've done prior to that night. So they they make you want to be invested into these into these wrestlers that are here before them. And that's what uh, that's when we started off the night with our first matchup. We had Eli Drake versus Jordan Cruz. Uh, what are your thoughts with this one? I thought it was uh, quite a nice match. Uh, first of all, I wanted to just mention about the, uh, the venue they were holding it in. Wow, well, wasn't that a nice facility? Hey, uh, I, I don't know what kind of building that was. Presumably, it's the one that uh, United Wrestling Network uses uh, for their. They must have a TV show or uh, uh, tape some pay-per-views or something. But this uh, looked like quite a pro setup. It had the lights. It had the ramp. Uh, they also did it with no or no or very little fans in it. But uh, I thought the uh, venue looked pretty slick. And uh, then we had Eli Drake coming out against uh, yeah the preliminary wrestler Jordan Cruz, who looked pretty good also. And uh, this was a pretty okay match. It's uh I like Eli Drake a, a fair amount, but it's kind of funny to watch a, a wrestler like him that uh, a big part of his presentation is is interacting with a crowd that isn't there. Too. So it's some of that kind of looks funny when he shouts out or wants the crowd to uh, repeat or answer his uh, question kind of thing, and then no one does. But, I mean, what are you going to do, right? you got to still uh, promote yourself. you got to still do your... Uh, your signature uh, sayings and, and moves. So I, I don't fault Eli Drake uh, even a little bit for that. He's quite an entertaining uh, character and quite a good wrestler too. Uh, I like a lot of his moves. He looks like he trains hard. He looks like he works really, really hard at wrestling. And uh, 
they were saying that this is his first match in quite a few months too, but it certainly didn't look like it. Uh, he put on a great show against uh, young Jordan Cruz, uh, ending up uh, by getting the pinfall from his finisher, the gravy train. What did you think of this match? I thought it was a fantastic way to kick off the show. I uh, like you. I like Eli Drake. I think he works well inside that ring. And, you know, you mentioned about the the feed of the fans that he usually has. And uh, this in particular, I actually liked how he played on this, where normally he's feeding off the fans. And I believe his words were, I might not be able to feel you in the arena tonight, but I can feel you watching at home. So uh, work yeah. along with me. The acknowledgement of the fact that he knows there's no people there, but acknowledges the fact that you're watching around the world at, at the video. I mean, it was a good play on what's going on currently and stuff like that without making it look silly at the same time. He was able to promote himself while at the same time, you know, kind of poking fun at the fact that it's like, yeah, a lot of this shit's being done with nobody around to see it. Yeah, yeah, I think you're right. Uh, maybe I'm a little bit harsh at first, but uh, yeah, I think you're quite right. A guy like Eli Drake uh, uh, connects with the fans. The fans connect with him. And, uh, and that was a nice move. And uh, this match looked really good. Yeah, look. some of the uh, COVID year wrestling we've watched, uh, so without fans and such, I thought this was one of the better presentations uh, in this uh, United Wrestling Network building. Uh, I thought it looked pretty good on, on TV, I must say. Yeah, and I, you know, I like the way that they handle the camera shots and stuff like that too. It uh, often didn't necessarily feel like an empty arena. Like I know we had a. Show we talked about empty arena matches and stuff like that. And they, these guys are starting to pick up on the idea of how to do this without making it feel like the arena is empty all the time. And I, I really like the way that some of these companies, especially these guys, are are handling the way of doing that. Yeah, that's a really good point, Monk. And I, I think uh, I never thought about that. I think you're right that they're uh, getting the hang of how to do this and, and not to look flat or not to look quiet but to still get your stuff over and still hype up the people watching even if you're not getting the actual crowd reaction from in that room i think the wrestlers are having to put themselves in the position or, or at least able to think of the fans watching at home hyping them up too I, it sucks because the wrestler doesn't get the immediate reaction back we all know that uh, energy like that flows between performers and the crowd back and forth, back and forth. We've seen that at live shows that we've worked uh, many, many times. But, uh, yeah, it, the, everything's more difficult this way. But the, as you can see, that some of these wrestlers are adapting to it nicely. And, a, you know, a chatterbox like Eli Drake is going to be one of the guys that can adapt to that, I think. Definitely. So it was great to see him. Great to see him back. And, uh Great matchup. Great win for Eli Drake. Uh, looking great. So, uh, moving on from there. Yeah, moving on from there. Okay, we got a ladies match next. We've got Camille versus the Killer Bay, Heather Monroe. Uh, now, Camille we're quite familiar with from NWA Power. She's Camille Brickhouse. Very large and powerful statuesque woman. Uh, I watched uh, during quarantine as she decided to do a bodybuild competition and, and uh, watching on social media her trials and tribulations of working out hard and dieting hard and uh, man, I, I think that must be so incredibly difficult to do but she did a nice job and, and God her physique is even more impressive than it used to be. She's a pretty tall lady. She's six feet tall or something like that. She's a former uh, Ball player and uh, and a legit athlete from when she was younger in school and all that and uh, Camille's a monster. Uh, she I think she's still fairly green in the wrestling world, but uh, coming along nicely. And this match, in fact, was uh, of course the most recent uh, work of hers I've seen. I haven't seen Camille do a lot of ring work yet, and uh, this wasn't too bad. There's some work to be done, but. With a more experienced opponent like Heather Monroe, I thought Camille did pretty good, and uh, and they had a nice uh, twelve minute match here, and uh, and I think it got both competitors over pretty nicely. Yeah, and I think I'm I'm sitting right where you are with this one too. It's like uh, Camille very familiar with her work uh, as the you know uh, ringside 
you know, person for uh, Nick Aldis, the real world champ there. And then, uh, yeah, starts to get into this bodybuilding and you talk about how she is a real athlete. I mean, she she definitely looks the part. I mean, this this woman looks like a like a physical specimen inside that squared circle. She is built like a wrestler. She is built for that ring. Definitely. I, I even marked it down that uh, there's there's work to be done. She's obviously green, obviously new to this. Give it time. I think she's going to be quite the competitor inside the squared circle. And like you said, having the experience of Heather Monroe there to carry this one through, we were treated to something that was very entertaining. It was a good, solid matchup and a good way to continue to push Camille in the direction that they're looking to do with her. Yeah, exactly. And um, uh, we talked about the inexperience of Camille, but when you look at what there could be developing out of this person, Camille, I mean, look at the pieces she's got. I Like we say this She's got size. She's got muscularity. She's got the the, the intense, mean face look and everything. Uh, I, I think the a lot of the pieces are there to make a good, um, strong lady wrestler uh, uh, to be one that's uh, with massive size and strength and uh, invulnerability. Kind of one of those like a monster heel type character. Uh, because of her physical size and uh, because of her athlete- athleticism, I can only see her getting better as an in-ring grappler too. And it'll be interesting to watch. I, I like uh, centering in on someone when they're at the beginning of their career because then you get to see the progression uh, of not only how they start but how they come along and then where they're headed in this uh, in this pro-, pro wrestling business. And uh, we know Camille. Uh, Dates Thomas Latimer, the wrestler. She's she's fully into the uh, wrestling world now, and I could see her uh, uh, getting a lot of tutelage from some more experienced stars. and uh, And I think just the only direction for Camille is up. But like you say, there's some work to be done in the meantime, and that's completely fine. Uh, uh, she'll work on it. Uh, she's worked on a lot of stuff already, and and I I only see her getting better in the in the future. Well, and I like I like the build of the story too, Pop Smokes. Like she she starts as a valet manager, or whatever. She has been doing everything to earn her spot as a wrestler. I mean, doing the bodybuilding, doing the training, doing everything of all this dedication and her dedication to the business as well too. And then she comes in and she doesn't look like someone who was just a valet at ringside that's been pushed into a ring role. This looks like someone who belonged in the ring before. And has that athlete background to begin with, and now she's slowly transitioning into that ring role, working with the right people, and getting that build to the one time where she will eventually become, you know, up there on the roster with whoever she stays with, uh, whether it's NWA, uh, UWN, or moves on to one of the bigger companies. As long as she's handled correctly the way she has been, I can see in a few years this being one of the uh, top lady stars of professional wrestling. For sure, and I think uh, NWA is, has been taking it slow with her, which I think is a good thing. And we see far too many wrestlers these days thrust onto television when they're not finished training yet and they're not ready for that. I, I don't even want to name names in the WWE but they and AEW, but they have some extremely crappy wrestlers, or should I just not <laughs> say crappy, but inexperienced wrestlers are on TV way too early because they have a look or because they have an interesting gimmick. But wow, like even uh, even some of those people in the WWE were just are clearly not ready for TV yet, and, and it just boggles my mind at how many people they must have on their roster, and still they have these inexperienced people on TV. But getting back to the point of Camille, they started her slow. Do you remember uh, one of the first uh, physical spots she did in ring was? Uh, hitting that spear on Tim Storm, that beautiful, beautiful football tackle that just took the big man and busted him right in half. It was really quite a nicely done spot. And I thought, wow, this uh, girl Camille is, is going to be a ladies champ in the NWA one of these days. And uh, I still believe it. So yeah, just bring her along slowly, make sure she's trained uh, properly and is learning the psychology of matches and, no problem, you, you'll have a superstar in your hands. Well, exactly. So big win for Camille there and, uh, you know, great things that we're going 
going to get to see from her and not the last we'll see of her in the entire night. So uh, moving on from there, uh, now we had Nick, all this is promo earlier in the night. Now it's time to hear from Mike Bennett. Uh, did uh, Mike Bennett's promo uh, win you over here, Papa Smokes? No, not really, to be honest. Um, I got to admit a certain bias about Mike Bennett. I, I kind of know who this guy is from WWE. I, I, as you know, I don't watch modern WWE hardly at all, but uh, I know who this guy is, kind of a lower to mid-card comedy dude, and uh, and he's stuck around unhappily longer than he should have and had some pretty crappy matches in WWE. And I, I honestly, I was expecting nothing from this guy when I – when I heard that he was going to be the next big challenger to all this is NWA title, I was kind of nonplussed by this. And then I saw this promo and I mean, it's obvious he's done a lot of promos before, but this, this didn't knock me out really. Uh, uh, he seemed a little awkward in his verbiage. And uh, I, I went into this match really not expecting all that much, but what did you think of the promo? Uh, you know, I'm I'm with you on the promo. Again, it's it's a similar promo we've heard from Mike Bennett before. It's a similar promo we've heard from a lot of wrestlers before. You know, I do it for my family. I need to do it for my family. And, you know, we, you've heard it once. You've heard it a thousand times. And when holding up against someone the level of Nick Aldis, this didn't necessarily sell me on. I'm pumped to see what Mike Bennett brings to the table in this matchup here tonight. Now, that being said... That's not how I felt after the night was over entirely at the same time. So why don't we just get past Mike Bennett's promo that was it, it was serviceable but just not very fitting for the show and get right on to Nick Aldis versus Mike Bennett, uh, the matchup itself, Pop Smokes, where I feel that Mike Bennett sold me a little bit more than what his words did. No, I, I thought it agreed with you there too, uh... That's why I wanted to set it up like that is because I had a bit of a bias against him going in. I didn't think much of this promo, to be honest. I'm also sometimes skeptical of people who get fired from WWE but then continue using the gimmick that they had in WWE. I I, I just don't like that. I, I like it when people leave there and then reinvent themselves, you know, like... Uh, a recent example of that would be uh, EC3. This was a guy that was, like Bennett, uh, frustrated in a company that was underusing him and not uh, using him the way he wanted to be used and, and not getting the matches and the talent that he wanted and everything. So when he finally got his release, started reinventing himself into a new character and making promos and building this new reinvented character, but this is not what Bennett is doing. So this, this is part of my skepticism going into this match is that this guy's just going to try and keep milking this cow that's, that's dry now from WWE that, that you don't work there anymore, man. And you don't have to do their stuff anymore. I would assume that he was not happy with his spot there because of how they were using, but then he's going to just continue the same gimmick because that's how people know him in the Indies. And, I don't know. It, it strikes me as weird. He even has a changed appearance, too. He's got his beard shaved off and his head shaved bald. But So I was expecting something different from this guy. But uh, having said all that, uh, you wanted to get into the match. and This match changed my mind completely. This match was really good. Bennett was really good in it, as well as all this. And, uh, yeah, completely uh, erased a lot of my skepticism. Yeah, and, I mean, it kicked off in a high gear and... Uh, it, it got messy off the start, and not in a bad way. I'm not saying messy like this was a, a bad thing. I mean, things spilled to the outside, and, you know, this it, it got ugly to the point where Aldis grabbed the championship, looked like he was going to go and, you know, give Mike Bennett what for by smacking him with the uh, sweet Charlotte there. And uh, that's when Maria Canella stepped in and kind of inserted herself there, trying to plead with Aldis to not uh, go and do this to her husband and stuff like that. And... That's when, again, we got the reappearance of Camille as well. And I, I started thinking in my head, well, here's a perfect opportunity. I'm thinking, is this going to end in a draw of some sort? Or are we going to see a no contest and inevitably get this intergender tag team? Uh, regardless of the fact that that's not the case, and we'll get to the finish in a little bit here, uh, I still feel that that's maybe where they're leading is possibly, you know, a one-on-one -on -one with Camille and Maria Canellas. 
Also, uh, or sorry, I say Canellis. Uh, Bennett, I believe, is their actual last name now. Um, I'm used to her with the WWE going under the name Canellis, uh, which I believe is her maiden name, but uh, Maria versus Camille. And then they can use that intergender tag team and inevitably lead up to a, a rematch between Bennett and all this. And I think we were saying before this one on the air, I said it wouldn't even hurt to have it as a, it, this is your last shot, ben, Bennett, like, you know, shit or get off the pot to you either win the championship or this be your last time fighting for it. Yeah, yeah. And like having said what I did about his still using his WWE gimmick, it kind of worked for this match a little bit in, in the way that, you know, him and Maria were both saying like, we need this win. Like our family needs this win. They they always have that, that smell of desperation around them. And, and it, it it made for an interesting element to the match. Like you said, it, it, it got messy in a big hurry. Uh, then it came up like, like a, like a wrestler that's completely desperate to get this win at any cost. He came out flying. We saw him, uh, he, he threw that, that hard spear at, at Aldous and missed and hit the referee that, at, which put the referee out of the match for a while, but you, it, it was nicely booked. You could see that, that, uh, Jeez, I was going to call uh, Mike uh, Canellis now. No, it's Mike <laughs> Bennett. He, uh, he came out with that desperation and that fire, like, like he wanted to maybe try and put all this away early, like he wanted to get that one, two, three, no matter what happened. And, uh, it made for a nice match. I, I liked the pacing of it. It started off frenetically. And then they were bra- brawling with the referee down. They brawled throughout the crowd. Uh, uh, all this gave Bennett that, tombstone pile driver on the uh, on the ramp yeah. and that was quite a dramatic spot and Bennett was down for a long time and that's the uh, little uh, spot that you talked about uh, came on where Maria was trying to protect her husband and uh, and uh, all this trying to assault him further and then Camille coming out and intervening but uh, I, I thought Maria played her part well in it and uh, and Bennett made the comeback after you thought he might have been out of this match and uh, it went on from there it was a uh, it was a 20 minute title match and uh yeah, this was pretty good stuff uh, like i say i was a little bit biased going into this i i didn't really have huge hopes that this would be a good match but in fact it was quite an excellent match uh, i'm happily mistaken about that yeah and i i 100 agree with you happily mistaken as well too i was never I'm never really on the Mike Bennett bandwagon of any sorts. Uh, I won't say that I'm on the Mike Bennett bandwagon now, but I'm I can get behind the idea of Mike Bennett having a short uh, a short feud here against uh, Nick Aldis, and then after that's all said and done, you know, I think Mike Bennett will actually look good coming out of this whole thing, uh, even without having to capture the NWA championship. Uh, he can come out of this thing looking like someone who gave you know, that fight to the real world champion, Nick Aldis here, come out looking good and then maybe move himself into a role where he finds himself among the, you know, the, the upper mid card, possibly working with some of the other championships that are kicking around in places like NWA and stuff like that. Maybe even MLW. I mean, there's definitely something you could do with this guy and not to the level of putting him into the uh, prelim matches or completely off your card. Like he was, haven't done to him over in the WWE. Yeah, yeah, no, this is completely different now, and uh, he doesn't have to. Uh, he doesn't have to rot on the undercard uh, in in these smaller federations. He, he can be a star here, and uh, I got to say, he he impressed me in this outing, uh, not only for his uh, wrestling and his like, ring psychology, but it's just obvious the guy's a very serious wrestler too. Here's another guy with the absolutely great physique too and that that always impresses me when people are are willing to put in that extremely hard work and sacrifice to get a a ripped and uh, muscular body like that and uh bennett looking awesome and uh i thought he was good in this match and uh yeah he may have made a partial fan out of me uh out of nothing at all there, and uh, I mean that's that's what every wrestler is trying to do is, is turn the fans so that they uh, like and respect you, and uh, he did that in this one match for me. So uh, uh, yeah, I, like I say, I'm happily mistaken. This was quite a good match. Uh, all this also looked impressive in this. Uh, almost lost his title a couple of times. 
I managed to get that uh, clover leaf submission hold on. Bennett uh, uh, refused to give up. I uh, had his wife cheering him on, cheering him, trying to get him to the ropes. He tried, but all this had too much gas left in his tank. Dragged him out into the middle in that clover leaf submission, and uh, Bennett passed out and was declared uh, out by the referee. That's the end of the match. All this retains uh, Bennett back to the drawing board, but uh, hey, he made a couple of fans out of us tonight and probably uh, quite a few more other people, so uh, a victory in his book too, I'd say. Yeah, and the fact that he didn't actually tap out, he passed out, it's always a way to make a guy look strong, so I mean, he can even utilize that saying that, you know, Nick Aldis made him pass out, but he sure didn't make him give up at the same time, and that really helps to sell Mike Bennett moving forward. So, yeah, like you said, made a fan out of us, uh, especially on this night, and hopefully that he continues down this path. Uh, maybe uh, lose a little bit of the uh, It's All for the Family promo eventually. That could be dropped here and uh, start focusing on uh, maybe how tough he is when he gets in there and he really is passionate about winning championships and winning wrestling matches because I can get behind a passionate Mike Bennett who doesn't tap out to a guy who doesn't give up I mean that's that's the kind of wrestler I can get behind I think that pushing him in that direction will do wonders for his career yeah totally true uh, uh I think a guy of this stature of this experience of this look um he's a handsome guy he's got a great body he's a he's quite a good wrestler I don't think he really even needs that gimmick. I think it's good for him to bring Maria out to the ring. I always enjoy seeing Maria. I'm not going to deny that. But, uh, uh, yeah, if he, I think she's a good uh, ring second for him to uh, cheer him on outside. She looks awesome. The fans all know her. She's beautiful, all the rest of that stuff. That part's good. But, yeah, I agree with you. I don't think he needs to carry on this uh, tired gimmick in yet another company. I think he's got the skill and the look just to be Mike Bennett, a uh, uh, kick-ass wrestler that's got a beautiful wife that seconds him to the ring. Uh, what more do you need, really, right? Uh, I don't think he needs any more than that. Exactly, and uh, if they can do that with him, they look forward to the great things that we're going to get. So. That was NWA Shockwave episode one, I guess. And uh, Papa Smokes, are you sold on wanting to continue to watch NWA Shockwave after this one? I am. I am. I, I liked Power a lot, partly for the venue uh, and that that old Georgia Championship Wrestling ring. And I liked the way they had the fans there. And I liked the podium that they did the promos at, uh, et cetera, et cetera. But like I say, I want this company to continue. I, I want, I want uh, Billy Corgan to finally get some joy in wrestling. This guy's had the worst luck. Uh, he's all he loves wrestling. All he wants to do is have a company succeed in that. Uh, he's he's bought into the NWA, uh, and uh, I just wish he could catch a break. You know, after he bought into TNA and was screwed around by uh, Dixie Carter so bad and screwed out of so much money and I, I, I'm surprised he didn't just leave the business after that but I, I respect the guy he obviously loves wrestling he's had a real hard go of it in the business over the last whatever it is 10 or 12 years he's, he's never really got the success that he's craved but during this COVID thing, I feared that they would shut down, but I like this. They're going to partner with uh, with some friends over at United Wrestling there, and uh, maybe this could be the, the kick in the ass that this promotion needs to uh, get its product out to a few more fans, get its roster over, uh, continue with all this as the uh, classy champion and everything. And, and I honestly think if more fans get their eyeballs on this product, they will like it. And I just wish them success. I hope this is the uh, combination that they need here working uh, during the pandemic until we can get to live crowds again. And uh, yeah, I wish them all the best. I'm going to keep watching and giving my support from here. Yeah, me as well too. And uh, I mean, it was a big double whammy for me. I've always been a big fan of Billy Corgan, uh, going back to my younger years uh, with listening to the Smashing Pumpkins. And just gotta say, they just dropped a new album, and the kid and me not only got to enjoy that, but also some good old classic wrestling. Uh, both thanks to Billy Corgan. So, you know, uh, 
great work that he continues to do both in the wrestling industry and the music industry as well too very fascinating individual that uh, i'm sure one day will warrant an entire episode of ring respect of his own uh further down the years here and stuff like that too so uh wonderful to see the nwa back uh great alliance with the united wrestling network and i'm definitely looking forward to another edition of nwa shockwave and uh what they hold for the future uh it's going to be wonderful i'm glad to see good wrestling again here in 2020 uh i was starting to think we weren't going to get any pop of smokes and now we're just getting a a mitt full of it right at the end of the year it's wonderful yeah yeah i'm so relieved and so happy and i like uh doing this format on uh, ring respect radio too is uh, doing some reviews of some current shows this is fun for me this keeps us watching the new products and uh, watching and analyzing and then you know, just trying to do our small part in promoting the products that we like, promoting some of the uh, wrestlers that we support, and uh, getting the word out there to more people that uh, there's some good stuff beyond the, the big giant companies. That keep it on the keep it on the independent scale and, and watch some of the new stars coming up before their stars, and and just uh, enjoy the product for what it is. Uh, enjoy it for. Uh, you could go over the matches. You can uh, analyze them, see which ones you like, see which ones you think work or don't work, and uh, and talk to us about it at uh, at Ring Respect Radio. Drop your comments. Uh, tell us what you think too. And uh, we're always always uh, happy to interact with the fans and hear what they think too. And maybe some of you uh, disagree with us too. That's fine. Tell us and. Uh, the, the best thing that can come out of it is is more discussion and uh, more opinions being uh, jockeyed around in a in an adult fa- in adult fashion. All this stuff can be discussed. So uh, just as we're doing tonight, yeah, bring it up to us anytime on uh, social media, and uh, we're we're willing to talk about this stuff with you. Yeah, definitely. So make sure to follow us on all social media. You can find us on uh, Twitter and Instagram as well too, uh, and also go to make sure. You follow all our friends, uh, Backbreaker Media, Wrestling Rodeo, Wrestling Soda, and all the wrestlers involved with the Alberta Invitational there that we reviewed earlier in the show. And, you know, like we said, check out NWA Shockwave if you haven't checked them out already. Uh, You know, if you checked out NWA Power and we're not interested in that type of style, we promise you NWA Shockwave is completely different and deserves a second look from any of the skeptics that didn't enjoy the nostalgia look that NWA Power brought to the table. This is a more modern feel with a definitely more sport-like uh, feel to it, kind of like what MLW is doing in some sense of the word as well, too. So very entertaining, very enjoyable, great wrestling overall. But that's going to bring a wrap to this episode of Ring Respect Radio. We thank you once again for tuning in. Make sure to like and subscribe as always. Thank you once again for all your dedication to what Papa Spokes and I do. We appreciate it through everything. Stay healthy, stay safe. And we look forward to hearing from you again soon. Goodbye, everybody.